What's up, everybody? Pat Flynn here with Noah Kagan from AppSumo, Sumo Me. You've heard him on the podcast before. One of the most downloaded podcasts of the SPI podcast. So oh, thank, you thank you for that. Um, and, you know, I, I can't wait to get into the, today's content. Just first of all, I just have to say that, you know, I love Noah for several reasons. One, because uh, we were at a conference earlier and he was doing some workouts, which were really hard. I was sore for like three days afterwards, so thank you for that. Uh, also, you are a Cal grad like I am. Go Bears. Go Bears. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Same time. We didn't even know each other. No. But same year of graduating. We probably passed each other like, you know, from that the, moment. In fighting sprouls and yeah. like slow motion, like, who's this guy? That guy. Um, <laughs> I'll see him on the web. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and then also, he just comes with a lot of great information, especially about validation. He, I saw a couple of presentations you did uh, in front of large groups of people. You talked about this with Tim Ferriss a few times and just this idea of, being able to know whether or not this idea you have, which uh, you know could go either way. Is it gonna be good, is it gonna be not? Uh, you know that I'm talking about this in my book, Will It Fly? And so I wanted to bring Noah on to talk more about this uh, because really it's something that I think we could all and should all dive deeper into. So when it comes to, like when you get an idea, for example, and you get yeah. ideas all the time, you're an entrepreneur like the rest of us, like ha what's your process for vetting that idea? Yeah, you know, I thought about it recently because um, I was talking to a friend of mine who started a company, and it's really fun, and, and, and a buddy of mine, Ryan, said this to me as well, it's really fun to play business. And I think that's where a lot of people who are starting businesses spend their time. They spend 80% of the time with like, all right, so I know I gotta do market research, and let me look at the Facebook ads to see how many people are available, and then I'm gonna do Google searches, and then I'm gonna go interview people, and then they spend 20% of the time actually seeing if people give them money. And then I kind of realized like through a lot of, like probably, I don't know, not half a million dollars, but a quarter million dollars of spending my money, hiring lawyers, doing all those things that, that I don't want to do anymore. I'm like, well, let me just spend time on seeing if people will actually give me money for my ideas. And so that's why I always try to encourage people, which they never take my advice, which <laughs> is just go see if one person will give you money for what you're trying to start. And if you can try to do that, and I generally give people 48 hours, like take 48 hours, try to get three people to pay you, and you have something on your hands. So hand. you run this exercise with people you know who you're trying to help? For anything, yeah. If you're trying to start a business, like I was, um, I had an idea just as an experiment. I was like, okay, I want to see if I can start a newsletter business uh, for sleeping. Just as a totally stupid idea, right? But who here sleeps? Yeah, everyone, yeah, you guys, yeah, 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 everyone here watching. So I was like, well, how do you do it? So like, like, let's say most people want to start a newsletter business for sleeping, right? They're like, well, I don't know how I'd get customers. I don't know. Well, okay, so what's the most important thing with that? How do I get money, right? If you're trying to start a business, you need money. So who has the money? So I was like, well, let me go to the, there's all these mattress companies now. There's Casper, there's Tuft & Needle, there's uh, Parachute, there's Bedsheets. Let me just call them, be like, hey, I've got a mailing list of a thousand people who are influencers who sleep, and it's gonna be $100, and I'll just email them about your mattress. And I know they like sleeping, because I do it, and they're into it too. <laughs> and all you have to do is you call them up. Those people want customers, right? And so, this I haven't actually even done it yet. Someone, please do this. And all you do is you have a weekly newsletter teaching people how to sleep better. Call up Casper or Tuft & Needle, ask for Dehi, and be like, yo, 100 bucks, I'll email this whole list. Once they give you the $100, then you just go find a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And what most people do is they're spending all this time signing up for MailChimp, reading a blog post about like, all right, how do I like set up this different hack and this thing? It's like, no, go find the money, now you have it, and then go get those people who you need to deliver that to. And that, that you could do, I could probably do that in an hour or two hours tops. And why is it so important to collect that income though? Um, what if somebody was just like, yeah, I would totally buy that? Yeah, yeah, it's like girls who said they'd call me back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm still waiting. I'm like, I'm like, they're like, dude, I'm really into you. Here's my number. I remember that. I was at Lollapalooza. Remember that back in yeah, the day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this girl, I remember she had leather pants. And I was like, you are the hottest thing I've ever seen. I think I was in eighth grade. And, uh, and then she gave me her number. And I was like, it was like, when you don't let you first get numbers and you're like a geek. If you're online, we're mostly all geeky. And I remember I went home and I was like, okay. And I called it the next day and it was like, ding, ding, ding. This number is invalid. Aww. Uh, and that's how it is with business, man. It's easy for me to say, like, when you say, hey, Pat, will you buy my book? Yeah, yeah, I'll buy your book. I'll buy your book. But when it's like, hey, will you give me $10 now? That's like, like that's a truth serum, which people say, um, but to actually go do it is a different experience. So two things that I like to encourage people to do. One, I call it velocity to $1. And this is something for your book that's very important for a lot of people watching. Just get your first dollar. I know with my online businesses, like with AppSumo or SumoMe, when I got my first PayPal email, See, now, yeah. now, I don't know about you, do you do you filter your PayPal emails? Like they go to a separate folder? Yes. That's when you're doing well. <laughs> if you have a separate PayPal no, email but, folder. No, in the beginning though. Oh, it's like. I had an app that allowed me to play a cha-ching sound. Oh. When I would, and actually my dad told me to do that. Yeah. Because he was like, first of all, when I started getting into online business, he was like, no, you should go back to school. Like go get your master's in architecture. 
And I was like, I don't want to do that because I need to keep control of my life. And then he turns around and he's like, this is so awesome what you're doing. Cha-ching, let's put this cha-ching Ooh, sound. The cha-ching. And it would go off like in the car randomly and he, he loved it. I loved it. It was, it was amazing to get that feeling that people were actually buying stuff. And I think that's a key thing that if you haven't had that experience, so the velocity of dollar is like, go get just a dollar. Just start with something, and then once you've actually gotten the momentum, you want more. You're like you're validated, and you feel good about yourself. Well, you have a course. Uh, I do have a course. The, the other thing with that course, I'll just tell you the things that we already do in it. Yeah, yeah, please. Um, it's monthly1k.com. Uh, but looking, the first exercise in that, though. And that's exactly what I was going to say. So when I started doing businesses, um, I just started doing the things I thought were supposed to happen. Like I started, I tried to do like a betting site, and I spent we spent quarter million dollars building all this stuff. We went to Vegas for lawyers, all this stuff. Um, and what I and then when I went to other people to try to show them not how to do that business but how to do AppSumo, um, I thought they would just go out and copy me and they would do well. But what 80, 90 percent of people had was fear. They have fear of like, well, Pat's special, Noah's special, I can't do it. Me and Pat, we have okay, we have special blood. Uh, <laughs> we have this Berkeley blood that you can't have. But um, but the, the point though is that like there's a lot of fear with a lot of people. Uh, for numerous reasons, which I, I don't really want to get into right this second. Sure. So I, I created the coffee challenge. And the coffee challenge is, and anyone can do it, it's totally free. You go to Starbucks. So like if you're watching this right now, and my favorite people are the people who are like, oh, I'm not scared of that. They're yeah. always the worst. <laughs> they always say, I have always can do it. Well, go do it. Prove it to yourself. And what you do with the coffee challenge, you go to Starbucks or any coffee shop, or if you don't drink coffee, this is what they'll always say. I don't drink coffee. All right, go tea. I don't drink tea. Go to Whole Foods. It's too expensive. Go to the mini mart. Anyways, go anywhere you go today and ask for 10% off. And what you learn about yourself is just an amazing experience. And then you apply that to business. Business is exactly that. Pat, will you give me an exchange of value for this money? That's all business is. Mm-hmm. I've given you a service or a product, and you're giving me money. So if you can start building up that, like, Immunity, is that the right word? I have a yeah, low vocab. So. Um, <laughs> okay. But if you have that immunity around Berkeley it. Berkeley doesn't care about vocab. No, apparently. I was in ESL. I mean, no. yeah. it, was, it was a rough time <laughs> in my life. Anyways, I'm good with the math and the money, so it works out. Uh, but yeah, so the coffee challenge is just more of building up those, um, your kind of like uh, your, your strength. Artillery, yeah, it's your, like going to the gym. Weaponry, right? Yeah, and it's one of the core things I was most shocked at shocked about with uh, people starting businesses. And that's, I love that exercise because it's, it's, it's a small thing. It's not very hard to do. It can be done in just a few seconds. We all go to coffee shops or Whole Foods or whatever Anywhere, anyway. Yeah. Um, and I love that. And I remember doing this because you had told everybody to do this on the podcast. And um, I was scared to death. Right. Like even though I do business, I was like, holy crap. Like, and then I started thinking, well, what am I really scared of? What's the worst that yeah. can happen? And uh, the worst is that they just say no. And in business, you have to realize that people are going to say no sometimes. What did you learn about yourself? Uh, I learned that um, I am not as good as I thought I was. Mm. That was a big thing I learned. I, he always does this. He like turns the interview okay, around. Sorry, sorry. No, no, it's good. I love it. I mean, this is this is. What did, when did you f- first start doing things like that? And what other examples you have? I think a lot of people have done that one. Do you have any? Other? Yeah. So some of the other ones that I just I just try to put. I, I think it's those moments where you second guess yourself. And you're like, nah. I, I, you make that excuse, and I still do it too. I do it all the time. That's the thing you go do. So a few specific ones I've done recently, and I've, I've said a few of them publicly, but like, I'll go up to people in airports and I ask for their newspapers, even if they're still reading them. I'm just like, hey, can I have your newspaper? And they're like, I'm, I'm reading it. I'm like, I know, but you don't, I don't know, those are just sitting there. And so that's very uncomfortable because they're definitely gonna reject me most of the time. But the other times they're like, oh yeah, of course, have the newspaper. Um, and another one I always, you can take airplane seats. It's kind of funny to sit in someone else's seat on an airplane. That's a bit different. Uh, they're like, that's my assigned seat. And you're like. Oh, I thought I was supposed to sit here. It's definitely very awkward. Uh, one thing that a friend of mine who's running a small business, actually, um, what he's doing, he's scared of. is, uh, And I'm actually, I've noticed, and I was shocked at this, we're scared of calling our customers. If you work in an online business, you work online because either one, we're not attractive, uh, or two, <laughs> or two, you actually don't want to talk to people. Mm-hmm. You don't. I don't. And uh, with sumome.com, I've spent the past two weeks getting on video chats, getting on phones. If you can do, if you're scared of that, if that's too far, just do live chat. Like use Snap Engage or use like Intercom or Olark or Zopum. There's free, a lot of free tools out there, and just start engaging people. Like everyone has tons of visitors, but you kind of like just start just disengaging. You never yeah. really connect with them. You're like, yeah. yo, the buy button's in the middle. I've I've heat map tested it and optimized it. Just just click that and don't talk to me. Um, and I think that's a way that you kind of start connecting in business, connect with your customers. And overall, that's how I've really grown a lot of our businesses. Like I go back to like one customer at a time, getting them on the phone, um, and just one by one building a business up. If you want to validate your product, you have to talk to people. Yeah. It's just, uh, you have to. 
Yeah. And so you have to get over that fear, of course. And I, I'd love for you to tell the story about how you created uh, Sumo Jerky, which is in the book, of course, but yeah. it's such an amazing story. And so, so start from the beginning. And you even gave yourself 24 hours to make this happen, I think, right? Yeah, so we had the monthly 1K.com course, and I've started a few businesses. I've started a lot that failed and a few that have done you know, seven figures. Um, and so with Sumo Jerky, I basically was like, all right, we have this course that shows you how to business. And the number one way I've ever sold the course was doing Sumo Jerky. It's the number one method of selling because people are like, wow, it actually does work. And I'm like, yeah, you just follow exactly what I tell you. Um, and so with, with Sumo Jerky, I basically told people like, you tell me what business to start and I'll start it. Um, because all businesses are problems. And you have to see, will people pay for this problem? Mm -hmm. And what I encourage people when they're trying to validate and get people to pay or not is that if they say no, that's the best part. Because then they're like, well, everyone has money. Caleb's got money. Tim? He's got money. Pat's got lots of money. You see his money. Don't kidnap Pat. Uh, he's got lots of security. Um, <laughs> this guy. Yeah. So everyone's got money, but where are they choosing to spend it? And if they're not willing to spend it on that, they're willing to spend it on something else. So maybe you can move your business and find something that they're excited to spend money with. So I said, hey, do you guys choose businesses that are AppSumo customers? And they basically had jerky, lemonade, and hot sauce. And I like all those things. And it's I was funny just, that they're all food. Yeah. Well, was that was that? No, there's no restrictions. I mean, a newsletter business would have been the easiest for me to start. Because um, I, you know, I know, I know what I would have done with just same things I've done with AppSumo. Uh, so for the jerky business, I got the notification from the customers that that's what they wanted me to start, and then I was like super cocky about it. I was like, and it was about 7 p.m. I was at the gym, and I remember I was on the treadmill, the treadmill of death, <laughs> and I was our stairmaster, which is even worse. And I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna be such a cake. This is so cake. Oh, I'm gonna relax. I'll start in the morning. I'll get the thousand dollars profit. I'll be the best. Because that was the goal, thousand. Thousand dollar profit in 24 hours before the product was even created. Just oh, yeah. For the idea, essentially. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, uh, and I can talk about a lot of the nuances of that. Um, and I think that's the point. I, I was like, I need to just make the money and then get the product. Uh, and I was like, oh, this will be cake. And then I was in bed at 12, and I remember it distinctly. And I was like, fuck, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> oh, frick. Sorry. Uh, I remember being uh, in bed, and I, I like woke up, and I was like, I was panicking. And um, I think one of the biggest takeaways for anyone watching, if you're wanting to really start a business, um, number one, give yourself very uh, strict deadlines. Like say, I will do it this weekend. I will do it this week. Because you start, uh, I started, I tried to start a subsequent business, which I took three weeks of just like asking people and going and flip-flopping. But because I only had 24 hours, it really confined me and mm -hmm. I really took a lot more action. So if you're watching, give yourself 24, 48, 72 hours, like by the time this episode's over, uh, something to that effect. Have a deadline. Yeah, have a strict pushing, deadline. Right? So at 12 o'clock, the first thing I did, I was like, oh my God, if this, I'm gonna fail. Um, and there's like, you know, 700,000 plus people that are gonna know about it, which is a little embarrassing. Um, so what I first did was I made a model. So I took out a Google spreadsheet and I was like, well, if I didn't make $1,000 profit, I just work backwards. Like, jerky's probably gonna sell for 20. I'm gonna make like $5 or $10 for each one. So I need to sell this many bags. And that so was like- So 1,000 profit, not yeah. just in sales. Yeah, wow. yeah. More challenging. Yeah. Um, so, but I think that's one of the things that a lot of people just skip is that you need to just have some basic understanding of how your business works. So like AppSumo, I was like, well, when we did AppSumo newsletter, it was the same thing. We sell it, we make this much. All right, well, how does that look as a business? And don't spend, don't get distracted and spending hours on it, but even just use, you know, pen and paper on, uh, will work. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I needed to sell like a few hundred different units. And what was really fascinating about that was it said, all right, Noah, either an and I was like, well, I need to sell a few hundred units. There's no way I can call 500 friends or 400 friends in one day. But what, what I realized was, wow, who, I can sell more than one at a time. So can I sell a subscription? Because that's the only way I can sell 12 or yeah, multiple yeah. ones. Or secondly, can I sell, how can I sell in bulk? And I was like, well, there's offices. Offices, mm -hmm. um, And so I basically had that ready. And then I started, I went back to people. Like in that, in that moment, I just started posting on Facebook groups. I, and I would not tell people, hey, it's for a challenge, because that, that would be cheating. Right. But I went back to people and I said, hey, guys, I'm going to start this jerky business. It's 20 bucks a month. Uh, it's going to be super delicious premium jerky. I eat a lot of jerky, which I, I still do. Um, who will pay me $20 today? And I'm only going to take, I think I, I try to limit it. I'm only taking subscribers today for this business. Did you even consider how you were going to get the jerky packaging? No, none no. of that. Okay. None of that. <laughs> I don't know if that's really bad or good. Um, but I know that a lot of people will spend the 80% of time on that and then 20% on actually seeing if there's customers. Right. When they finally find out there's no customers. They line that, everything up first and it's like, well, it doesn't work out. So you kind of do have to do the 80% on the other end. Actually. But here's the, the caveat with that. Every, there's, there's probably about 40% of people watching be like, well, it won't work for my business. They're like, Pat's book won't work for my business. The jerky thing is stupid. 
Uh, but it's the fundamentals that I really try to encourage people with. If you're starting a mattress company, sell the mattresses before you go make them. And then, or like one uh, point that I've, I started realizing and noticing afterwards is like, you bought a ticket here to Austin, right? Mm -hmm. How'd you know the plane existed before then? <laughs> I mean, I didn't go to the airport to check before. I just trusted the system and I've done it before. Yeah, or this like really nice room. You paid them a bunch of money, what, like a month in advance? Uh, yeah, for this hospitality room to record these. Of course I did. I did get an, uh, a photo because I wanted to make sure it was okay. legit. So, <laughs> but the point is, is for a lot of things in our lives, we prepay. Right. And uh, when you do that, you just tell people, hey, if you don't even have the hotel yet, which obviously they do, you can say, hey, here's what I think the price will be. It may be shifted a bit, but I'll let you know the cost. And people, and as long as you're upfront and the expectations are clear, like the airplane, hey, you're gonna fly, it's gonna be this date. And sometimes they cancel the air flights. Mm -hmm. But as long as you do that in your business, it's okay to prepay and get it started ahead of time. Um, and so what I did is I went to Facebook groups because I knew a lot of people were online at that time. It was like midnight. So I looked for groups that I was already active in. And I just said, here's my PayPal. PayPal at okdork.com, just send me 20 bucks, or I'm gonna have subscriptions at like $200 for the year, something like that. Um, and so I, I did that and I did emails to friends who are my closest friends. And people always say, I don't like selling to my closest friends. And my mother, my brother, my father all said no. They all said no. And so it's, your closest friends won't bullshit you. Right. At least mine didn't, and I appreciated that. I did, if they didn't really want it, they wouldn't. Uh, but I went then and looked for my friends who already like healthy things, who liked, I looked on Facebook for paleo, I looked on things for CrossFit. Um, and in the morning, I think I had probably like a few sales, which was my first like- That's kind of cool. I was like, oh, thank God, thank God. But it's, if it didn't work out, it's still a good sign for, for those who are validating their businesses, Yeah, right? I mean, and dude, it will definitely not work out. It will, every time in business, I'm like, this is where I'm getting my Ferrari. I always think about my Ferrari. I'm like, oh, it's gold. It's gonna a be gold gorgeous. gold Ferrari, really? Yeah, that'd be cool. Blue and gold. That'd be pretty cool. Dude, if we had matching, we'd like go out. Um, it always, you always get rejected. And I think this is one of the things I was thinking a lot about before we chatted today, where it's like the winners of business and life persist. That's it. Everyone, like as much as Pat is the nice guy in line, I, which I, that's always think of you as, Pat has had a lot of struggles. Pat's had a lot of challenges. Like he didn't just put out one podcast. You, like how many podcasts totally think you've put out? Well, as Pat's approaching 500 and SPI is approaching 200, so close to 700. And then plus videos, plus ones you didn't even publish. So let's say a thousand over how many years now? Uh, seven. Seven years. Okay. So let me just put a big thing here for everyone watching. If you want to make a million dollars, you have to work on it for five years. That's it. You work on it for five years, you get a million dollars. Everyone, uh, not everyone watching, but a few people watching want the million dollars week one. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't work out, and then they go to the next idiot. And but they hear stories of people who get that. Those aren't true. They're fairy tales. The real people, and it's also not about making money, it's about working on things that you're interested in and you wanna spend your life, not your whole life, but maybe five or 10 years of doing it. Um, and the quick fix stuff, like I've tried them, they're never as fulfilling as they seem. Like I did a, like a payments game, I did Facebook games, and they did, made some money, but every time they kind of started wavering or going down, I was like, screw that stuff, let me try to find something else. Uh, it's only, I generally believe when you find something you're excited to be creating for the earth. You make the most money and you have the most enjoyment. Mm -hmm. uh, so like the jerky, I ate a lot of jerky and I was like excited to tell people to eat jerky. And to your point, and I thought that was uh, it's really uh, astute, is that like if people didn't want jerky, I'd be like, well, what are you eating during the day? Like, are you eating other snacks? Are you eating, like, do you want coffee stuff? I would probably try to adjust it or maybe like if it wasn't the right person, I'd go to other people or if everyone says no, maybe about 10 people, I would move to a different product line. Um, and so in the morning, what I started doing was I realized like the one by one wasn't working at all. That's where I really had the breakthrough. And so what I did, which I thought was pretty clever, is I looked at all the companies I was paying for. So I went and basically was like, well, I pay for email, I pay for hosting, I pay for um, credit card processing. And I called up all of my providers. And I said, hey, I've spent you about like $5,000 this year, a few thousand dollars this year. You guys should really buy jerky for your office. That's a new business we're starting. And these people already like me. These people are, I've already given them, not, it doesn't have to be hundreds of thousands, it could be anyone. So look at like your baker, your hairstylist, the people that you've already supported, they're a lot more likely to support you. And you have a relationship with them already. Exactly. So that was a big breakthrough. So like, I think SendGrid was a huge customer really early on, I really appreciated that. Um, and then I asked people who are my current customers and my best friends, so like everyone on their phone, this is one of your best things you could do. If you have a phone, which some of us do, just go to your favorites, so you have your favorites, right? So I went through my favorites, it's the easiest customers, and if you're doing a B2B business, I asked all of them for their office managers or the people who run their offices. So this is probably the big takeaway around this business. So one, it was, 
I don't think it was that amazing personally. I think it was a lot of, I was tired as shit. When you're tired, you know you worked hard. And, um, I think that's what I, number one, did really well. I just mm -hmm. worked my ass off. Mm -hmm. Uh, the second thing I think was a big breakthrough and, and just thing that I think we all neglect. I know I, everyone here neglects it and I neglect it as well. We don't look uh, at the assets we already have available. We're always looking for some book that's having this new thing or some speech that, you know, they do inspire us and they're, they're great, but we never really reflect internally. Mm -hmm. Like if I just went and looked at just like my close contacts on my favorites, the companies they worked at, maybe my colleagues, their one step further friends, places that I've been to, maybe the gr Facebook groups or Slack groups or LinkedIn groups or whatever thing you're already active in, you already have all of the customers, all of the partners, all of the people you already need for almost any business right now. Um, but a lot of the times we avoid that or we don't think to go back to the assets that we have. We're looking for um, kind of a golden egg or something, uh, it's a panacea, I believe it is, mm -hmm. uh, or silver bullet that'll, that'll magically change everything. It never does. Uh, a lot of business, at least for me, has been like, you go to your assets and then you can persist and you continually uh, stay consistent with it. That's such good advice. And then how's Sumo Jerky doing now? Um, Ryan's been interesting. So we just gave it to a customer. Uh, we had like You a, gave it like he's taking charge of it? Yeah, so I think we sold about 4,000 revenue, 1,000 profit in the 24 hours. Um, nice. I spent 99 cents, which I was a bit annoyed with. I bought a GoDaddy domain. If you search Google for GoDaddy, you can get the 99 cent yeah, domains. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think you, have you, you've posted about that. Yeah, I think. yeah. Um, and I think it was you that said it. I might have copied you. Um, <laughs> so I spent 99 cents. That was a little bit annoying. But the, I gave it to Ryan, and, and uh, he applied. He was really distinctly the best. Um, and he struggled for a bit. So his big success in the beginning was he went and looked, and I, I don't think he'd mind me sharing, he went and looked at uh, AngelList and uh, uh, TechCrunch and uh, Crunchbase for all of the uh, Series A and Series B funded companies. And then he had a VA find all of the CEO's information. And then he emailed every CEO that just got funded and said, hey, your, your company should have healthy snacks. I'm the sumo jerky guy. Like, let me sell you jerky. <laughs> uh, and, you know, surprisingly, that, that took him from, I think, 4000 to, like, around 15000 uh, And so <laughs> jerky, bro. Yeah. Here's the thing. Everyone always thinks your business is stupid. Uh, and maybe if they always think it's great, it's, there's something to concern. Like, when I started AppSumo, my, uh, my boss at Facebook... I was like, yeah, I'm going to start this daily deal thing like Groupon for, for tech software. And he's like, you're going to run out of software in a month and you're going out of business. And I, he loves me and I love him. Uh, his name is Doug Hirsch, just FYI, Doug. Um, <laughs> but Doug's, a, Doug's my boy. But Doug, you know, he had doubts. And every, there's always going to be doubts. It's never going to be big enough. But the biggest thing is just to get going. It's that velocity to $1. It's getting that momentum and getting that going. You know, and then five years later, AppSumo is still a seven-figure business. Yeah, and awesome. it's growing every year. Um, you know, we have a guy named Eamon Abdullah running. who's just phenomenal. Um, and then out of starting up Sumo, we created Sumo Me. Yep. Right. So we're like, hey, our customers want another thing. So why don't we give them instead of just you know daily deals, let's create software that'll help them with their businesses. So with Sumo Jerky now, um, he's had a lot of success. So he did all that, and then he ran out of it, and he kind of got a little stumped. And what was really fascinating, this was interesting. He started changing the whole model. So the business was really simple: twenty bucks a month, you get great jerky. Um, and so what what Ryan started doing was like daily deals and like discounts and all this like give me your email and I'll give it to you free and I was like and, and it started going badly and I was like a lot of times is what we forget why don't you just go back to what works mm -hmm. go back to your assets go back to the thing that actually people really wanted and liked uh, and he's had a lot of success with it like he's got a lot of like Facebook ads have been really good for him referrals like hey do you have one friend um, I think he's had a lot of luck with marketplaces so can you get your product listed in other marketplaces Etsy Create Joy, Amazon uh, Craigslist Facebook groups um, and I think, you know, that's, you know, now he's doing a little gifting. Yeah. Uh, but I've been it, a subscriber for a little bit. Are you? It's great. Nice. Yeah. I just got my delivery yesterday. That, it was okay last month. <laughs> no, I mean, then that's part of the jerky is not every month going to be magical. Uh, and then you evolve the business. So like things I was talking to him is like, people may want other things besides just jerky. People may like the jerky you sent last month. So maybe you could sell more of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think with our businesses and when I try to think about coming back to the asset part, instead of trying to just find new customers all the time, how do I just over serve the customers I already have? I love that. And can you talk a little bit about Sumo Me? Because you just brushed on that a little bit. I think it's a great product, and I'd love for you to just share. Because a lot of people are going to be building websites and using that sort of thing. Yeah. I think it's a great tool, obviously very uh, affordable at the start. And so can you, can you talk about that really quick? Yeah, I mean, to hire me or Pat to come run your website would be expensive, right? So basically, that's what we've done with Sumo Me is all of our brain, all of our, our knowledge is put into the software of how we've grown AppSumo and how I've grown other businesses in one toolkit that's totally free. 
Uh, we have some paid options, but 96% of it is totally free. Um, and basically there's different tools in there from growing your email list to getting more traffic. And actually one that we're launching pretty soon, I'll announce it here, and I don't think we've put it out publicly, is, is paying things. So if you actually on your website, if you have a blog post and you're like, hey, you want to pay for something, we'll make it within about 20 seconds you could sell anything. How's for, that going to work? Like a pop-up or something? No. So it'll actually be payment buttons within your post, and we're not charging anything. So literally, like you have a blog post, and you could say, hey, like Eric on our team is working on this with Josh. Um, and you have a blog post, and you're like, hey, I want to sell a course, or I want to sell a consulting hour, I want to sell like a physical product. You can drag and drop a button into your page, no fees, 20 seconds, sell anything you want on your website. Uh, and so we're, you know, we're, we're excited with that. We're basically providing cool. the tools for any small business to grow online for free. I love that. All right, guys, so Noah Kagan, don't forget. Uh, check him out. I'll post a link to the SPI podcast episode that he was on. And, uh, dude, thank you so much. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you.